is he trying to use the giant arrow to damage the town hall so he can take it with the bats? It works! And he recalls up! We are into round two of the Creative Master Series. Our matchup today is a monster one. We have Rakiris and Yo-Yo taking on Rukin and Boja in the top left of our bracket. A lot of big name players, a lot of big name teams left in the competition. Let's see what they've got for us today because remember, the Creative Master Series is all about as creative attacks as possible because they will be judged by a panel of judges at the end that can award them extra bonus stars and often those bonus stars end up deciding these wars so let's see what happens Rakira starts us off here he's got a bunch of barbarians and archers a skelly donut to kick us off with the infernos and the clan castle being taken out by that and he's sitting on valkyries golems super miners and a bunch of wall breakers a little bit of lightning as well i'm seeing that he has two lightning and one quake and when i see that combination i have to assume he's setting up his royal champion to try to get something maybe he's trying to combine the seeking shield to be able to combine with the earthquake and get down the town hall the model that'd be really good value right there but he pops it right there does take it down model is out of the way there invisibility gets the world champion through and with the haste file she will tag that town hall out and will join with the queen of the side there down comes extra ice golems king over the right Clears that compartment. Gets the defensive queen out of the way there. Can he get the scatter shot? Scatter shot would be big, but the poison tower throw would also be pretty beneficial over there. Bunch of archers across the right side of the base there. Looks up at the very top of the base. What is this? We got a bunch of wizards. Wizards? No, it's a siege barracks. He's got the double P.E.K.K.A. Siege barracks and warden are going to try to solo the top corner of the base there. We'll see what comes out of that siege barracks a little bit later but the warden is running the life gem and the healing tome no eternal tome on this one putting the most powerful piece of equipment in all of clash of clans away and using this other combination instead interesting choice there but it seems to be working queen with the uh, with the healer puppet clear up the left side of the base there archers and barbarians swarming on all edges now gets the eagle artillery down as one of the final buildings and will finish off the storage on the right rakiris gets it done look at his army comp here quite the wild army here i didn't even see where i used the super miners i have no idea but it looks like he had extra super miners so four total that also came out of a siege barracks. So let's also keep in mind that there are only going to be four attacks total during this war. Yo-Yo and Rikiros will have two attacks each, and Boja and Rootkit will also have two attacks each. Then you'll get the extra bonus stars there from the judges, but let's see what Boja's got. I got a lot of bowlers here. A lot of bull lots of bowlers and super bowlers going for the bounces with the invisibility across the left side. Got the defensive row champion pad out, but a couple of tests have popped in that area. What is the plan for the rest of them? After like a bunch of random bowler kill squads here. I mean, we've seen something like that before. It is not easy to be able to pull off there. You got to get some serious bounces, but look at this. What is this? What is this? What? What? Invisibility? Rage? Bowlers step in. Bowlers take the bounce. Bowlers try to get the expo down, but cannot. But got the queen down. More visibility. What is happening? More bowlers! This time, it is... Super bowlers? No, those are regular bowlers. Those are all regular bowlers. I thought maybe some of the super bowlers came down, but... Looks like it was all regular bowlers there. Did he get enough value out of this? That was a very, very big investment. Multiple spells, and a lot of his RB camp space right there, but... I guess we'll see what we can do from here. At least he got that queen out of the way there, which also set up for the flight. You know what? Actually, now that I think about it... Getting that expo down just set up the flame flinger. Huh. <laughs> all right, all right. That was his primary target then, and he did secure it. So I guess he's on track. He'll freeze up the multi mortar down south here, but the, uh, the flame flinger is about to go down anyways. But he'll get that multi mortar down, and we'll see what happens down there. Whatever troops pop out. Looks like some Yetis. Yetis and a Valkyrie. So the main force here with the Super Polars moving across the top of the base there. Now have joined with the Warden. King off to the far top end there with the Royal Champion. The King will be able to get redirected back to the base there, hopefully. It goes to the outside. That could potentially be a little bit of a problem. But look where he's standing right there. He's in a perfect spot there to stay right in front of the Royal Champion. Avoided outside trash. Kind of lucking out with that one. But he still needs to make his way across to the Town Hall. Super Polars staying nice and healthy here. He's got the healers. Gotta get through this monolith, though. It's causing some problems. Already burned his queen ability. Is she even still alive? I'm looking for. I'm not seeing her. He's got the world champion. Makes her way into the town hall with the haste file and the hog puppet. We'll pop it right there. And I'm still looking for that queen. I don't see her anywhere. She must have gone down somewhere. There she is. I see her right there. Right in the middle of the jump. 
But there's a lot of base left here. I'm not sure if he's gotten a punch to get through it. Man, it was cool attack there. Cool approach. But it doesn't look like he's going to go through. So it does look like he ran the frozen arrow and the healer puppet. And the Twitch chat here is saying that the queen died through ability to defensive headhunters. So maybe that would have made the difference to the attack there and give him the punch that he needed to get through the rest of the base. But that's not the way it played out here. And with a miss on the board... The percentages, as long as they're two stars, are kind of irrelevant because once you have the judges start devoting, they're going to get partial star awards. And so the percentage is honestly completely irrelevant as long as he's either a two star or a three star. So a 51% two star is just as valuable as a 99% two star other than the judge's opinion. But it looks like yo-yo 23 using the warden what does this warden got for equipment oh he's got a fireball oh he's got a fireball pops in and takes out the ego artillery wiping out the top of the base and now we'll join with some blues he's still seeing got seven bat spells and yetis though what the heck we got going on here this is wild all right get into the multi inferno got the slammer right there whatever's inside of it warden's gonna survive for now still got the king and queen with the queen running the frozen arrow, king running the giant gauntlet. Pretty standard equipment across the board over there. And the world champion will also run her strongest set of equipment as well. With the haste file and the hog puppet. But golems get out in front of the queen. King needs to get past his defensive king. He's got the headers in place. He will get past. Gonna go ahead and use bats and skeletons onto the monolith. He's got the town hall doing a lot of damage to those troops right there. And stopping the extra tanking effect right there potentially. But the queen... Luck out of the defensive Lava Hound. Not a deal. Lava Hound's going to slow her up a bit. Kind of trudging along here slowly. But the king, the king is able to get over to the Town Hall. Okay, here goes here goes Bats. Here goes Bats. Bats deployed directly to the top side. Scatter shot. We'll start to make our way through that. And we're backwards. And if he can keep the Roar Champion moving here. And the king specific. Oh, what's going on with this Town Hall? Um, King, you got this, buddy? Okay, he's got it. He's got it. But the, the model still stays standing. Bats kind of got wrecked. King's still alive somehow. I don't know how the king is still alive, but he's got a queen ability. He's got a road champion ability, so he should be okay here. Queen will step through. Frozen arrow locks down the model. Hog puppet and haze vial. Surge the royal champion across there. And Yo-Yo 23 will get another one on the board here for Tribe Gaming. And Rikiris and Yo-Yo, what a monster of a team. Two of the best players in Clash of Clans Esports come together. And they got two of the board. The heck do you do with seven invisibility, bats, and 30 sneaky goblins? He's also stacked with a bunch of headhunters here as well. Only two healers. Quite the weird, weird army here. But with the pressure on, has to deliver. Otherwise, he would have his team fall two stars behind. So I have to imagine every moment of this attack is planned out to the smallest details. But looks like up top there, he's run into a little bit of resistance with a Tesla. But he's got to follow for whatever he has planned for that area. He puts in Yetis over the left there with Sneaky Goblins. Get the cannon down. And a funnel over the right of the Warden as well. What kind of equipment we got here? Fireball. Fireball. Once again, Fireball. But bats as well. With seven invisibility and all these bat spells. Look at the value that he could get out of this. Oh, man, man, man. That's not easy. He's got to swarm the bats here. Gets the CC. Gets some buildings over to the left there. Shifts that invisibility slightly. Loses a lot of bats as they shift. And he will end up losing out on all those bats. With only a couple of his primary targets taken down. Leaving up a lot of major, major targets that he would have wanted down. But the two healer warden walk is making its way in the very bottom. But the warden getting go. That's not where I wanted to use that. That's definitely not where he wanted to use that. He wanted to probably hit the scatter shot directly. And then he probably wanted all these upper buildings destroyed. The Ricochet Cannons and the Multi Inferno specifically. But he still needs to get the Town Hall down. I'm not too worried about it. Well, I, I wouldn't be too worried about it. If he hadn't burned all of his invisibility at the bat spells. And that means he has none. Zero. To go after the Tunnel Takedown. So this is not even guaranteed to be a two-star right now. As all of his major forces are already deployed. And he's struggling. He's struggling. He's struggling. I'm very... Go oh, okay. You got it. You got it. You got it. He just put in 13 Steve Goblins. And he's able to get it there. And just overwhelm it by numbers. And luckily able to get it down without the extra spells being necessary. So like we said. The percentages don't matter. Only the stars do.
As long as they get a two star. I don't think I've ever seen a successful mass super archer attack at Town Hall 16 yet. So let's see if Rikiris can change my opinion on him. As he makes his way forward here with a slammer. Where's it going? Okay, it's off to the left. Where we want it to go. He invested a Lava Hound onto the air defense there to get it to move forward. And it did not have any extra surprises with any Teslas, but looks like an Electro Dragon, a couple of blues will pop out. What is his plan up there? It seemed like he got a lot of value with the Slammer, but maybe he has something bigger planned that we're not realizing. He uses Lightning around the core of the base. Gets down the Sweeper, the Monolith, and the Invisibility Tower also tags a bit of damage onto the Defensive World Champion. But down south here, looks like he's funneled on both sides here to drive the King through a jump spell to go directly in. And Super Archers deploy over to the left side. But Super Archers have such long range that they end up activating the Town Hall. Or was it the Earthquake to activate the Town Hall? Either way, King will take a little bit of damage on the approach there. The Super Archers seem to be surviving through that. King gets the Town Hall down, and all that damage will be quickly alleviated. For the right side, we're Champion and Queen. Have made their way in and will fight off the remainder of the CC that went that way. The king will tank the Lava Hound. And the queen's gonna take off north here. Multi Inferno stay standing. Super Archers making their way along the outside of the base down south. Getting across to the scatter shot. Rage Gem off of the warden, keeping them alive. Rage Gem and Life Gem. <laughs> you would think that you'd need to run an eternal tome to keep Super Archers alive. But I guess extra HP pool and extra damage output and extra healing is the way to go there. And he is very easily keeping them alive as they make their way to the other multi inferno. Getting all the extra healing output of the healers from the Rage Gem. That group is doing some work there. It's slow moving. But oh man, is it staying alive as it takes out everything before it can really threaten them. They never really have high damage. Output on them at any given time, but the, the Eagle Artillery I thought would be a potential problem staying up so long. But the Queen wraps all the way around the base there. It looks like Rakiras gets another one on the board. It's a six pack! Boja with Valkyries. Three recalls? Wait, what? Three recalls? All right, all right. What do we do with three recalls? Warden walk in from the left side. Queen walk in from the bottom corner. Valkyries getting set up here and three recalls on standby. If he's going to win over the judges, this is the attack that needs to make it happen. But he will get into the scatter shot over the bottom corner there. Warden's still doing good work there, but one of the biggest problems with multiple hero charges is the Eagle Artillery strikes. We need to make sure that the Eagle Artillery does not force heroes to ability or overwhelm them, he will rage up and he will end up burning the Eternal Tome. But he recalled the Queen after he set up for the Flame Flinger and she will redeploy over to the right. Warden gets the assistance of the Rage and the Headhunters and will get the Defensive King out of the way, but still keeps taking Eagle Artillery strikes. Eagle Artillery is the biggest threat to multi-hero charges. It is the quickest way that your heroes can get overwhelmed. That's why every time you see queen charge attacks, we try to minimize how many troops we deploy until we get the eagle artillery down and we generally prioritize it. But the warden goes down and Boge is in trouble. He will have the healers switch over to the Valkyries of the King. They're all gonna work together. The queen gets recalled again. That's recall number two. Still has another one standby. More Valkyries deploy up top and we'll join with the queen, but the king Lost a lot of the Valkyries. He recalls as well. Wait, he recalled the King? Flame Flinger's still working down south. King got a couple Valkyries with that recall as well. So they can all work together. King gets a redeploy and will go into... Is he just winging this? It feels like he's just winging it. <laughs> all right, well, Flame Flinger opens up down south with more Valkyries inside. Wait, was it only two Valkyries? Where'd the rest go? Spring traps going off there, killing some of the Valkyries. Maybe they're all just perfectly stacked and I couldn't see them. But the World Champion deploys over the far left side of the base there. The Queen goes down. Queen had the Phoenix on this one here. King was running the Yak on this. And the World Champion getting wrecked over the side of the base there. The healers do not tra survive the transfer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not going into Boja and Rootkit's favor. They are struggling. And now... Yo-Yo and Rikiris have the chance to potentially not only go for a perfect war, 4 out of 4, but also 
a potential defensive shutout. Can Yo-Yo and Rakiras go for the perfect? It is Inferno Dragons. It is Baby Dragons. It is Skelly Donut. And it looks like he's got a Warden Walk started at the very bottom of the base there with a fireball. Okay, okay. Yo-Yo once again going for the fireball. Level 27 and a very, very compact air right there. He's set up for this. This should be a layup to wipe out that entire area. But he's also sitting on a bunch of extra invisibilities right now and an earthquake. So he could very reasonably drop a fireball into that area, but he needs to make sure that it hits the right target. With the clan castle destroyed, he doesn't have to worry about hitting the fireball out of the clan castle. We know that there's a very, very high value target there. If you can outrage the clan castle, never pull it out, and then destroy it with a fireball before the troops can get out of it. Obviously, that works. But up top, we need these Inferno Dragons to secure the town takedown. And the Warden Walk keeps moving forward. But with the Eagle Artillery already out of the way, the Warden is not being overwhelmed down there. And with the Rage Gem, He's able to boost his healing output, and he's still able to go. There's the fireball. There's the quake, and he wipes that area out. Nice value right there. And now the next phase attack is moving. We got the Inferno Dragons and Siege Breaks working to the right. King deploys over the far left. And the Warden will keep on charging forward here. He's not even done yet. He's already got so much value, and he's far from over here. But the King steps into the side. He makes the Warden invisible to get the Raged Up Expo off of him. As the Rage Tower activates and boosts the damage to the area, but the Warden keeps moving strong. Over to the right side, Siegebergs release Super Minions and now more Inferno Dragons dropping the area. Still got the World Champions, still got the Queen. Wait a second. No, 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 no. He doesn't deploy the Queen or the Royal Champion. Is he seriously trying to swag him? Is he trying to swag half of his heroes with a fireball attack? You gotta be kidding. Yo-Yo 23 and Rakiris not just taking the win, doing it with style and doing it with a mountain of swag. It's 12 out of 12 possible stars and there is no way that they are not advancing the next round of the Creative Master Series. I think sometimes we get so focused on what is the best we often forget that we're also trying to have fun. So even though things like the fireball may not be the best use of your ore, if you're limited and you have to choose, it won't give you the highest hit rate in the world, but you're going to have some fun with it. And it's going to be a spectacle every time you break it out. So I like it. I like it. I am actually almost inspired to use the fireball now to use it as my next equipment that I go max out there. But I gotta finish up the hog puppet that I'm working on right now. So I still got some work to do. I still got some work to do. But as we go into Rootkate here for the final attack of their war, and obviously after the way this war has gone for them, the final attack of the season here in the Creative Masters series, I just wanna remind you guys that the website store.supercell.com just did a little bit of a revamp. They actually have added a whole bunch of cool stuff into their shop over there and a bunch of ways for you guys to get a ton of extra rewards in game, event passes, gold passes, everything with a lot of extra goodies than if you would get them in game. So I'll show you that in just a minute, but let's focus in on Rukit for just a moment here and let's see what he can do as he shoots that giant arrow across the base. Was able to hit a lot of the big defenses there, hit the town hall. But I don't know if he got enough value or did he? It's hard to say right there. But a giant arrow and a frozen arrow. Able to wipe out nothing major. But he did get some damage on a lot of abilities there. We'll go for the skelly. Oh, wait. No. Oh, wait. What? Ah. Huh. <laughs> was, was he trying to use the giant arrow to damage the town hall so he can take it with the bats? It works! And he recalls him! Rookit! What the heck? That was wild. But now, what do we do with the bats? We saved them all. He saved every single one of them they're all out of there and now we can have them in his back pocket for the next phase attack all right this is good this is good this is really really good but now he still needs to triple this who knows maybe maybe the judges could end up swinging it with that i don't know i, I think that uh i think yo-yo and rakiras have played so well today and stayed creative that i think no matter how wild this attack is i don't think the judges are gonna be swayed enough to swing the war by multiple stars, you know? <laughs> it's good, but it's not that good. There's Fireball at the very top. Fireball with the Warden. 
Level 20 on that one. Helps assist at the very top of the base there as he deploys the warden with the royal champion of the Dragon Rider. King finished off over the left side of the base there. Is he still set up the bats? I think he redeployed him to the very top corner of the base there, but I don't think they got a lot. Would have been nice if he could have got them deployed into an area that would actually be vulnerable to bats, but there's all these multi infernos in every different section of the base there that are kind of shut him down, and the world champion seems to not be going the distance. So, guys, it is indeed a perfect war for Yo-Yo and Rikiris. And it is a defensive shutout, as they won't let Boja and Rukit have anything this war. But like I was saying, if you guys want to go check out the website, store.supercell.com. Supercell is now offering bigger packs than the ones in-game. 7x value here with a bunch of goodies, more value than anything you can get into the in-game shop. We also have this other pack here for like low-level players. Uh, it's like three bucks here for a 20x value 10 builder potions that's a ton of value for only three bucks right there if you are interested in any of that also they have this new system where they stamp your gold pass if you buy five gold passes from the store then you get a book of everything and so if you're buying them anyways then you might as well buy them from the store and get the extra bonus out of it they also have event passes and as you buy anything through the shop on here you get these extra points and as you gather up the points there from all the same things that you can purchase in game which these all seem to be the same price then you actually start to work your way through the bonus track here so the bonus track has a bunch of extra rewards all the way through and the more you spend the more things that you unlock so if you're already spending the money anyways then you can spend it on the shop there. And if you want to help support the channel while you do it, then use the creative code. If you want to use mine, it is code Eric. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to, I guess, Rikiris and Yo-Yo for putting on some show for us today. But make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you like this video. And we'll see you in the next one.